If asked in interview, do you know what is ground bounce? Do you know what are the factors in a chip that controls the ground bounce? Do you know the methods which can mitigate the ground bounce? Let's start our journey to know all the answers. Hey guys, welcome back. In today's episode, we are going to discuss the below points. First, we will do an introduction to the concept of the ground bounce. Next, we will do the correlation of power and ground bounce. Next, we will walk through couple of techniques through which we can mitigate the ground bounce. Next, we will highlight the power getting technique which is one of the most used mitigation techniques for ground bounce and our episode will end at this point here we are done with our menu for today without any further delay let's begin introduction power supply noise and ground bounce can cause considerable path delay variation in vlsi circuit generally we have two line that is vdd and ground right in any vlsi circuit so noise in either can cause path delay that is delay in the timing in any of the vlsi circuit and if there is a delay then it affects the performance of the chip so here is the grave importance of dealing with the ground bounce Ground bouncing noise is the primary cause of pulse switching in high speed circuit and a major cause of poor signal quality. This is the immediate impact. This one is the ultimate impact and this is the immediate impact of the ground bounce. To the shared ground or power distributed network during the wake up event, the bouncing noise generated in one of the power domain is transferred to the active block which will flip the logic states. So in some episodes I have discussed about the power domain. I'll provide the link in the description. Please watch it for understanding the power domain. Now when one particular power domain is in the sleep state, that means uh, we have several blocks, right? When a particular block is there and it is waking up because of the external signal or maybe some sequence of the signals that is already there is coming from a particular block. So during that particular event, these things can go, this false switching and noise, all these things from one block to the another. And it can flip the logic gate state. That means it can flip 1 to 0 or 0 to 1. That means it actually disturbs the uh, data transmission inside among the different blocks. And definitely that will be a functional failure. This noise is known as ground bounce noise. Whatever we have talked about, right? All these effects are summed up as ground bounce noise. Generally, any disease is detected by the symptoms. So, we have talked about the symptoms and the disease is the ground bounce. Major component of the circuit noise is inductive noise. Now, we are entering into the classification. What type of noise they or impact they within the circuit and impact the circuit? There is an inductive noise. It is a critical and challenging design task to control the amount of the inductive noise that is transferred into the power planes. Here we are done with uh, this particular slide. Let's move on to the next slide. In the next slide, we are still continuing the introduction. Package pins, bounding wires and on-chip IC interconnects all have parasitic inductance. We were talking about one of the root cause which is the inductance noise, right? So where does it come from? It comes from the parasitic inductance. Like we have parasitic R and C extracted during the PF extraction or DSPF extraction. Similarly, yes, we can also extract the inductance. That inductance does stay within the VLSI chain and this causes ground bounce. When an inductor current experiences time domain variation, a voltage fluctuation is generated across the inductor. Now, what is a time domain variation? That means we have a transient behavior. Any circuit behavior that is changing with time that impacts because if you remember your class book right there is a transient response for the both rc circuit and the rlc circuit when the rc and l coexist in the vlsi chip obviously the transient effect will impact all of them and in return they will generate some bad effects one of which is the crown bounce this voltage is proportional to the inductance of the chip package interface and the rate of change of the current we are very specific here not, nothing more to say for this point as a result, when the logic cells in a circuit are switched on and off, the voltage levels at the power distribution lines of the circuit, it is also very very plain and simple. If we have a noise, it is going constant, right? If we have a noise going like that, obviously this level will be impacted by the superimpose of the noise that is stating here. 
This inductive noise, sometimes referred to as the simultaneous switching noise, because it is most pronounced when the large number of I.O. drivers switch simultaneous. Now we are talking about the chip packaging where the I.O.s are there and the inductance comes from that particular point and we coin a term called simultaneous switching noise. And it is nothing but the inductive now if you are right the io pads or connection of the wires they are there they exist there and that wires interconnects they also contribute to so apart from the apart from the parasitic uh, uh, inductors coming from the silicon tip we also have the io pads and from where the inductance behind the ground bounce does exist now here we are talked about uh, the general concept uh, of the ground bounce through the introduction and we have given some of the background reasonings why the ground bounce happen so let's move on to the next slide we are done here correlation of the power and ground bounce as the noise comes in the noise affects both the power rails that means the vdd as well as the ground so how does it looks it looks like this and we are explaining here so this is our vdd line this is our gnd line and the noise if the noise is occurring there we generally refer to it as a voltage drop and if it is impacting the ground line gnd line then this noise will be termed as ground bounce. The ground bounce is nothing but ground noise. Power bounce is the noise glitch on the power line. Is the power bounce. When ground bounce and the power bounce are in phase, is the common mode noise. They will not affect the local logical cells, but will degrade the signaling between the distance transmitter and receiver, that is TX and RX. Generally, if these two are in phase, this one and one is in phase, it will not impact the immediate circuit. Rather, if we have a block here, which is the TX, right? TX, and we have a block at other point of the circuit, RX. You know, right? The VLSI wearings uh, inside a chip runs in the length of kilometers, although the chip is at all the routing. So when a trans signal is going from, if we interpret the signal here and here, these two signals here and here may show a difference because of the ground bounce, the power bounce noise. So that in turn impact the signal exchange between the TX and R. When ground bounce and the power bounce are out of phase, differential mode noise out of phase, they adversely affect the local logical cells causing jitter in timing circuit. When these two, right, these two are out of phase, not in the same phase, they will be impacting the local logical cells. That means which are there, maybe in the path or maybe there is some, here is our TX right and here. This path it may not be where at all and there might be circuitry which is processing the signal before going to the RX and also it can impact the logic cells here, here right because we don't know how our chip is there, how it is designed. We are giving a general guideline here. You are the best judge when you are working on your chip. You can actually interpret these concepts into your theory. Ground bounce mitigation techniques. Many design techniques have been used to reduce the effect of the ground bounce such as power getting technique, stacking power getting technique, various empty CMOS technique, these are nothing but multi threshold CMOS, adding decoupling capacitors that is decap, having separate ground buses for IO buffers and internal circuitry, widening ground interconnect buses, evenly distributing circuitry among power and ground pin. Previously, in couple of sides, we have talked about the ground bounce and the visual representation of it and the in-depth impact of it. And here we have listed couple of methods which are used in the VLSI design area for different kinds of needs and different kinds of circuitry to combat the, as this is a hot episode about the ground bounce, we are not able to accommodate all of these techniques and their details. In case you need them, just please write down in the comments. We will create more FAQ episodes per topic basis. That means if you are asking, we will create for each of them here in this page. However, we will touch this one of the most used technique that is power getting technique. In we are done here. Let's move on to the next slide. Power getting technique. We are touch basing here in this particular slide about the power getting technique, which is one of the very very popular method to tackle with the ground bounce. Power getting technique is widely used in VLSI to significantly block the leakage currents in standby or sleep mode. 
Here a slip transistor is added between the actual ground rail and actual ground circuit ground also known as the virtual ground. Since we are giving a brief description we are not diving deep we are just touch basing so have to survive with all these short and sweet descriptions and uh, to understand from these two points right this method is for the slip mode right and how it is done first we add a slip transistor between the actual ground rail and the actual circuit ground also known as virtual ground. During the sleep mode, this device is turned off, cut off the leakage path from the ground. So it cuts off the ground path, hence no noise is coming from the ground and hence the power and the ground bounce, but mostly the ground bounce is blocked, right? Here, power supply causes virtual ground rail to charge up close to supply voltage VDD, which in turn suppresses the leakage. This is another part of this. However, when the slip transistor is turned on, the virtual ground rail is restored to its act. This way, the restoration happens that we open up the channel again. This way, we control the entrance of the ground bounce noise into a particular block or into a couple of blocks. Here we are done with this particular slide, giving you a brief description of the power getting technique. Let's move on to the next slide. Thank you very much for watching up to this point and don't forget to like, share and subscribe in case you have some dislikes. Put that as in words in the comment section down below. And bye for today.